going on, everybody? Welcome to the Head First Project, where it's all about attacking life head first. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Nate Hoffman. Today is Monday Massacre, where we talk about lifestyle, motivation, self-development, discipline, education, and anything related to getting more out of life. Today's topic is Working for Your Knowledge, Part 2. Today, I have CJ Campbell of CFN Fitness with me. Today is going to be a special podcast. After I dropped the first episode of Working for Your Knowledge last week, I mentioned CJ a little bit and didn't get too much into his story, and he called me up and was like, hey man, I got some time, I like the episode, let's do part two and talk about some stuff. I originally didn't plan on doing a part two, but I got some good feedback from him and some other people listening and they liked it, so why not bring in some more information on Working for Your Knowledge? CJ has to be one of the best examples of a person I have ever met that really exemplifies working for your knowledge. He has done so much above and beyond and has more experience and insight on this than anyone I can think of. So let's hear hear what he's got to say. CJ, welcome to the Head First Project. I appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, what's going on, dude? I appreciate you having me. Hey, thanks for reaching out. I'm glad that you got a good response out of the episode. I know that you do your own podcast that I shouted out. I want to get another podcaster on here and just blend everything together and see what we can get going. Yeah, so, dude, I'm, I'm honestly happy to help in any way I can. And that's like, like you said, uh, I just wanted to call and, you know, be like, Hey dude, I got some time. So let's, let's hit this, uh, hammer on the nail and really, you know, explain some things and go through some cool topics. So I think this is great. Awesome. For those of you that don't know CJ, give him a little bit of a background about yourself. Uh, yeah, guys. So, Nate and I actually went to uh, Slippery Rock together. Um, you know, we went through college and everything. We were in the same uh, degree field, fitness management and everything like that. So uh, other than that, uh, I'm from Butler, PA. Um, I have a huge uh, background in sports performance and strength and conditioning and personal training and, um, you know, did a lot of work that Nate and I will go through here in the podcast and kind of like that order of how things came to be. Um, I recently accepted a director job at O2 Fitness in West Ashley in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, back in, I want to say this past July of 2020. So I am currently driving home right now for Thanksgiving break, but, uh, I currently reside in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and I love it. So without, you know, things that Nate and I did in school, um, I wouldn't be able to have this job here and we'll go into that in more detail, but, yeah, that's just a quick background. That's hope that's good enough for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, that end goal that you've got to now doing this job at O2 is huge. And that was a big step. But before that, obviously, you got to do all these little building blocks and get your staircase to that point. So we're going to go into that all the stuff you did dissect everything and talk about all the knowledge that you got out of that work beforehand. Yeah. Before yeah, your whole fitness journey started, before you ever decided what you wanted to do and started going to school for it, started doing all these training positions and stuff, when you were younger or even in college, tell me about some of the jobs that you had earlier on that you got knowledge and value out of that you might not have saw at the time, but you do now. Um, first of all, let me say to everyone that working for free will be more beneficial than any paid job you'll ever have. Um, and I truly mean that. So back in high school, I did free internships almost every summer um, at local gyms, bodybuilding gyms, you know, regular corporate gyms, stuff like that, because I wanted to be a personal trainer and I wanted to do everything along those lines uh, to basically be in the fitness industry. And I thought, you know what, I might as well do what I can now. And it was just one of those things where it kind of went off quicker for me. Um, And I did just a bunch of free work and internships. And once I got to college, I still kept that going. Every summer I worked three jobs, and one of them was always for free. And that's where I started getting into strength and conditioning more than personal training. uh, Because from personal training, I found out that it wasn't really what I wanted it to be. And we'll get into that sooner because that's where I'm at now. But um, once I hit college, I started my business with CFN. I started contracting myself to high schools for very little money. Um, 
because I just really loved training and I wanted to get into strength and conditioning. Um, I quit playing hockey at the time and I wanted to stay within sports. So I did a lot of work with my local high school, high schools around the Pittsburgh area. And, you know, there were some days where I had to drive an hour or over an hour just to go work for free for like three hours and then drive home. So I was almost driving as much as I was working. And that's hard to bring yourself to do something like that if you're not going into it saying, hey, I'm going to take money away from this. I'm going to take a paycheck with me when I leave. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like uh, nobody – well, it's not that nobody. It's hard for people to work for free between the ages of like 17 and I would probably say like 22 and 23 during school – because everyone is so stressed out about school, but at the same time, like, we have more time than we think. Like, we really do. While we're in college, looking back at it now, even when I took, like, 18 and 20 credits, um, I had so much time that I just pissed away uh, if I wasn't working. And that's why I chose to have a job or two while I was in school, and then I, I took those jobs, and I expanded more on it every single summer and I got an internship or I did volunteer work at a gym or a facility or something in the fitness field and industry um, to continue learning because, and we can talk about this more too. I just didn't think school was supplementing enough um, of what knowledge you actually need to get into the field. I I agree with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it clicked for me extremely quick back in high school. And I just kind of had that not, bad boy rebel attitude that I didn't care about school. But at the same time, you know, not a lot of people at 20 years old had two personal training certifications already and a shitload of volunteer experience working at gyms and stuff like that. It just, it was uncommon. Um, But I think you said it in the last episode, like you're doing everything you're doing on your side, Nate, to set yourself up for the long term. And, um, I, I'll never forget my mom told me to play the long game when I was in school, and that's what I did. So I thought if I could beef up my resume with all of these volunteer jobs and free internships while I was in high school and college while going to school full time, uh, it sucked. But I knew I would be better off once I put my cap and gown on and walked away from Slippery Rock forever. So uh, it's helped me so far. Um, but yeah, those are just some of the jobs and some of the routes I took in high school and college to really build up that work ethic and resume. Yeah, and touching on what you said about how much time you had in school, I really think that's a big thing that messes with a lot of people is everyone's so convinced that they don't have time to do anything. And even after they tell themselves and like all the people around them, I don't have time for this, I can't do this, I can't do this, whatever. They find how much like how much of that time a day, how many hours a day do you see these people sitting around watching TV or not doing anything? And they've convinced themselves that they don't have any time to do good beneficial stuff or like work and all that. And then they end up end up just pissing away the time exactly like you said. Yeah. I mean Yeah, and it's and yeah, it's I just like when we were in school uh, it's easy for people to have like two or three classes in a day and they're like, Oh, well, I'm just, I'm so mentally tired. And, and it's I, 1 PM. I, need, I need that nap. Yeah. Right. It's 1 PM. The day is like, ha- yeah, some right? people yeah. like you haven't even started your day yet. You still have like t- exactly. nine, 10 hours before you have to go to sleep. Exactly. And, and honestly, uh, like, look, I'm all for power naps and like 10, 20 minute naps, but, um, you know, it's one of those things where we take time for granted when we're younger and stuff like that while we're in school because we feel like, and let me just say, like, school is a job. Like, if you're going to school full time, it's a job, no matter how easy or hard it is. Like, you still have structure and accountability for classes. But um, I heard a really good, I, I don't know if it was a TED Talk or a podcast, but I heard a really good talk about someone saying, only focus time in school to the classes that you feel like are going to benefit you in the future as much as possible. And when I heard that, I think it was my sophomore year, I stopped giving a shit about all of like the elective classes I had. Um, I stopped stressing out about them. I stopped stressing out about the tests I had for them. Um, I didn't study for those classes. I think it was like our group fitness class and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, dude, I don't care about that stuff. I knew it wasn't going to help me in the future. I knew it's really, really not what I wanted to do. 
and uh, I was okay with that. I was fully okay with that. So my GPA, did it suffer a little bit because I chose not to care, and I was okay with getting Ds and Cs in those classes? Of course it did, but I knew at the same time that my work ethic and attitude and you know overall just drive and ambition would get me through interviews and stuff like that when that roadblock would come up when people would ask about my GPA, even though I feel like that shouldn't matter whatsoever. Oh, and so, mine was absolutely um, the same way because I did the same thing. I mean, you have to, everyone has to take those elective classes that you're never going to use and are just, a, you know, you got to go sit there for the three hours a week that it adds up to because the same thing happened to me. I decided at one point that if it's not in my major, not something I'm really going to benefit from, who, exactly like you said, CJ, like who gives a shit? I, I mean, when I'm applying for jobs and interviewing with people and they're looking at my transcripts, one of my classes, it was like a theater class, I think I got a C in it. And they're like, well, you got to, this should, this should be an easy class, but you got to see in it. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what? I took all that other time and I was going to the gym. I was studying for my real classes. I was learning more. I was getting more experience and everything. Like this is, I'm sorry, is this, is this a fitness job or is this a theater job? Who gives a fuck about that? Like if I'm not yeah. going to be on a stage and do, like doing all this sort of stuff and working in production and theater, that should be irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's, <laughs> It's so funny you said, like, it's so true. Um, and for, I want to apologize if my audio isn't as good right now. I'm, I'm driving, so I'm cutting in and out. But uh, the one thing the one thing I do, like, want to tell people is, like, hey, it's real. Like, it's real if you don't want to spend time on those classes. Like, I know my senior year of college, I built my CFN website from scratch while I was in class. Like, I didn't pay attention I only paid attention to one class my senior year, and that was anatomy because I knew I needed that. I knew my professor was awesome, Dr. Paul, and I knew he was going to help me understand anatomical concepts so I could use them when I'm personal training and coaching so people are understanding how their bodies work. That's just how it is. Oh, yeah, that's uh, stuff that you're going to use every day for the rest of your life and your career, but I don't, exactly, I don't exactly. know if I'll ever yeah. uh, live to see the day that you lead a yoga class or you hop on a spin bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing. And I had this conversation with a director of mine during one of my internships because we were going back and forth about, uh, like school systems and he was saying how like important it is. And, you know, it doesn't matter what classes you take, you need to be exposed to everything. And I, I fully get that, but I, I'll tell you right now, man, I think something cool for the school systems would be, Throw these kids into major classes right from the get-go and then have them figure it out right from freshman year if they want to switch or not, you know? Yeah, I agree. Too many people waste, like, I know, I've know i known people that change their major after three or four years. And you, at that point, well, you've been taking all these general studies and everything and not taking any major classes or not taking enough major classes to make a decision. And you're 80 grand in the hole before you decide what you want to do. And at that point, it's too late because you've got another two or three years to go. Exactly, man. Like, like the strength and conditioning class that you and I both took, I feel like kids should have been exposed to that right from the get-go so they know what the expectations are to obtain a CSCF certification. Um, because guess what? Like, and you and I both saw it. There were kids in there that we know they'll never be strength coaches because they just don't have it. Uh, and... I think it's just that exposure right from the get-go. It would save a lot of money for kids, and it would save a lot of time for people. I agree. And even if it's not a class that maybe would uh, get graded and have an impact on GPA and stuff like that, I think they should have like a mandatory thing that they need to go to to get exposed to that high-level stuff to see everything that goes into it so they can see like exactly like you said early on, wow, I didn't realize everything that's involved in this. Maybe this ain't it. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, another point that I brought up to in a conversation I had before, I told people I was like, "Hey, why are you know why are we focusing on all these BS classes in schools? Why are we not having actual businesses and stuff like that come in and do clinics and show us what they expect and how they expect people to act with their jobs, whether it's coaching, yoga, whatever? Like, have a yoga studio come in, and if you're in yoga class, like, hey." This is mandatory to go, and this is what these businesses are coming in to talk about. And I guarantee you, 
someone's going to be in that yoga clinic, you know. Oh, sorry. My GPS is going off. <laughs> um, someone's going to be in that yoga studio, and they're just going to be like, I don't want to be a yoga teacher anymore. Yeah. And that's the exposure. Like, why are we having people waste money and, you know, all this time when they don't even know what they want? And I, I think it's so important for people to be exposed firsthand. Um, that way you can kind of nip it on the butt right from freshman year and you'll save parents time. You'll save parents money and uh, you'll get all of that confusion kind of out of the way. That way, the next three, two, three years in college, you have that time to learn about your field and you're more confident going in the classes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and you're going to have a like, um, purpose I behind think, that time that you, since it's been solidified yeah, what you're doing. Yeah. 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 So when it coming back to your question, man, like, I just think it's it's about focusing your effort and your time on what you believe actually matters and being okay with that. Um, so, you know, anyone listening, if you're if you're actually wanting to be a you know injury therapist or whatever you want to do with rehabilitation, focus all your time and effort on that, not the strength and conditioning class. Pass the class, but don't spend as much time on it if your true passion is rehabilitation and special populations. Like that's just, I just feel like it saves a lot of people time. And even though you may suffer a couple points on your GPA in the big picture, it really doesn't matter. Honestly. Exactly. Um, and, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, so, my, it's so different talking about good. this, like for people that haven't been to school and college and sunk all that money and time and everything. But you can think about this, like in terms of your everyday life, you know, you're spending all this money on college to learn and get this knowledge put into you and buying the books and spending the time and the hours sitting there in class listening to this and studying. How many times, for those of you that don't go to college or anything like that, have you gone to the store and you see something that you like and you're like, wow, that's so cool. I need to buy that. I want to have that in my house. I'm going to use that all the time. I think it's so interesting. I'm going to whatever. And you spend how much money on that thing? You take it home, you use it one time, you put it on the shelf and never touch it again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I can't tell you how much shit exactly. I have in my house that I own because I've done that. And so many people are doing the same thing with school. They see it and they're like, wow, that's so cool. I want to do that forever. And then they do a, a little bit of it. And then it just goes nowhere. Like you said, how many people that we probably sat with in class that are never going to work in this? It's the same thing with buying exactly. shit you don't need. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the same. It always relates, you know. And I mean, even I know, honestly, man, I feel bad. I know people that are doing master's degrees right now that are still in school and are older than me, and they don't even know if they like what they're doing or want to do it. Like, dude, you know, uh, that's why I never really went back and got my master's or anything yet. And look, getting a master's degree is not bad whatsoever. I don't think people shouldn't do it. It's just if, if you're skeptical about what you want to do, it's better to get that bachelor's degree just to have that piece of paper to put on your resume, even how useless we may think it is, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> but to have that on your resume is just good to have. And then guess what? You get to go work in the field and look for a job now, you know, and when you get that job and you realize it's not what you want to do, guess what? You didn't waste any more time or money getting a master's degree on it. You already knocked it out now and saying, wow, you know what? I have a bachelor's degree in this, but it's not even what I want to do. Uh, and I'm glad I just didn't go back to school for it. I talked to people, dude, how many people do you talk to? And whoever's listening, like, how many people do you talk to? And you're like, wow, how did you get to where you're at right now? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm a director at a gym, but I have a degree in, like, chemistry. Yeah. Like, oh, all dude, the time. It, it, it cha exactly. So, like, I tell people, all my high school and college athletes that ask me about school, I tell them, I'm like, look. I'm like, go to something you feel like you want to do. And after the first year, if you're not confident or skeptical, change majors and you need to do what you love to do, no matter how much money it may make you after college. Like we, we got to stop looking at statistics and start looking at what makes people happy, man. Like it, it's just, it's so traumatizing. Cause I feel like a lot of it comes from the parents too. And like TV and social media, people, want to do what's going to make them a hundred K a year. And that's, you know, being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a real estate agent, like stuff like, but people fucking hate their lives. Yeah. 
Like, it's ridiculous. That's what I even thought about before I decided to go to school for fitness stuff. I mean, I had pretty good grades in high school and everything, and I was able to, you know, make some choices and do what I wanted to. And I thought about going for accounting. I was really, really good with numbers, and it just made sense to me. I took a bunch of accounting in high school. I even took more in college, and I was like, you know what? I might do this because I'm super good at it. It's going to be easy to get into. I'm going to make nice money. I'm going to be able to live comfortably forever. And then after I took a couple of those classes, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? I'm good at this, but I'm going to paint the ceiling with the inside of my head if I do this for the next 40 years. <laughs> so yeah. I looked at that yeah. and I was like, you know what? If I am good at this, but I'm going to hate it. And then I go to the gym all the time and I absolutely love that. And all those hours I spend doing that doesn't feel like a chore or anything at all. Why would I not try to make a living out of that and go to school for that? Even if it'll be a little bit harder and take more time and have to do more work for it, it won't feel like as much work. No, it won't. It really won't. Um, it's, it's tough because, you know, I didn't get – after graduation, I did an internship with Allegheny Health Network, and my boss, the director of sports performance – he was the strength coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team. And he worked in the MLB for 12 years, over 12 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I consider him one of my mentors. And I also consider him one of the people who literally broke me down to feel like, you know, pawn scum. And then he built me back up in the matter of three months in a summer. And I was planning on uh, working there because everyone was talking about how well I was doing and, how great of a strength coach I am and how much I know and stuff like that. But in August come my last day, I didn't get hired. So then I had to work at FedEx and I got a job at union fitness as a contracting personal trainer. I wasn't even on the staff, man. Yeah. I was a private contractor and I had to scrap and grind any client I could get. And I just knew I wanted to be in a gym. I knew I wanted to be around good people and I knew that I was going to have to really, really scrap and grind to at least make some sort of money. So the money has never, and even now, it's never even really interested me as much as it does someone looking at me, whether it's a kid or a 40-year-old client looking at me and saying, wow, like, CJ, like, I'm so happy I'm listening to you and I have you. And, you know, all those things that people tell us, um, I'll take that over – a paycheck any day. Oh yeah. That's going to stick with you forever. Yeah, dude. And I know there's real life things that we have to pay for. I get that. We're not stupid here, you know, but at the same time, how many people go to work every day and have not just the pressure, but the ability and the knowledge to change someone's life. So they don't get depressed and hate themselves and stuff like that. That's our job in the fitness industry. It doesn't matter what position you have. Yeah. Um, you know, that's our job. So uh, it's the ability to affect someone's life in a positive way. That's just our job in the fitness in- industry. You may have a different title, whether it's director, supervisor, strength coach, personal trainer, but it know, all comes the back to the same roots. The same. It does. It does. Before so. we get too far away from education and everything, you talked a little bit about people going for a master's and uh, just getting too far into something that you don't think you want to do. Uh, I've, to- I've told people about me starting my master's here soon. I'm going to be starting in a couple weeks, and I'm going to be going for a master's of exercise science in rehab science and nutrition, and nutrition is going to be a huge thing that I'm going to be able to use forever, but the rehab science is something that, like, it really interests me, and I want to be able to do it, but I don't have any exposure to it. I don't, I've never worked in a clinical setting and everything, so it's, uh, I'm kind of doing the same thing getting into it. But I'm putting that vote of confidence in myself that I'm going to be able to run with that and be good at it and enjoy that. But I think I've had two years in between my undergraduate and my master's now to really like look and think about things. But I think a big thing like and I think this is kind of the direction you were heading is people that go straight from a bachelor's that they're kind of iffy about or whatever. And they decide on a career that, hey, I need in order to do this job, I need to immediately have a master's to get into it. And what people will do is they'll go through their bachelor's and then their master's immediately, like six years straight. And then after six years of all that time and money on their first day, that's when they figure out that that isn't for them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, and that's why I tell people like I train that are in high school and college. I'm like, dude, 
I'm like, if you want to do physical therapy and be in school for six or seven years straight, you better believe that's going to be what you want to do. And a lot of people, and I'm just using physical therapy as an example here. Like people just do that because they're told that physical therapy makes them money. Yeah. And that's all they hear. People put, you know, getting a master's degree is one thing. Like you said, you haven't even been in a clinical setting and you're willing to accept the grind to learn more about the clinical setting, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's great because that's, you know, you want to do that master's because of the free work, the volunteer, the crappy jobs you had to work. Like you now have a clear more, you have a clearer picture in your mind about your confidence with getting your master's degree. And when people don't do that, like it's okay if you're scared to get a master's degree or further your education, it's okay to be scared, but you better replace that fear with some sort of work. Yeah. Um, you know, or yeah, you're just going to drown. Yeah, and you got to you sometimes you just have to run in circles before you figure out which direction you're going to go. You got you got to look every way before you pick a road and commit to it. Yeah, it's just honestly, man, it's just self-awareness. It really is. Like I knew when I graduated college that I didn't want to do my masters because I wanted to be a strength coach so bad and the people that I talked to, they're like get your CSCS. Yeah. Get your CSCS. Like that was all it was. So I'm like, okay, if I don't need a master's degree and I can get a decent strength coach job with a CSCS certification and not pay thousands of dollars, like I was going to do it and take my time. And, um, there's just like, there's no timetable on stuff. Like I've talked, I've talked to people that are 24 and 25 that will almost talk down to me because they have a master's degree and I don't, you know, but at the same time, they haven't even had a job in their field yet, and they have two degrees. So, like, <laughs> what exactly? Balance, you know what I mean? And look, it's it's not about having pissing contests with people. It's really not because it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of happiness. But at the same time, like, man, you just got to be willing. Like, if you're going to make decisions, you have to live with those decisions. Like with you, you're going to have to live with being in a white collar clinical setting for rehabilitation stuff like that, where it's not going to be that smash mouth strength coach loud music kind of yeah. thing that you and I are used to you know and that's what I've had to do here at O2 Fitness in South Carolina like it's a white collar administrative director job yeah like, it's not blaring, it's not blaring uh Metallica and mom crew in a weight room full of college guys working towards one goal it's a bunch of adults in a calm setting at a corporate gym trying to help with personal training it's a complete different world so Uh, whether it's a master's degree or a job, it's just all about adapting and self-awareness. That's all it is. Yeah. And getting that experience to, you might not even translate directly. You know, it's, if you get in a setting like that, that's like super professional and developed, and then you decide to go back to that loud, hard ass strength training setting, you know, it's, they're obviously not the same thing, but you're going to have stuff that goes both directions. that's going to help you either way. So even if you don't end up sticking with one or the other, you're going to have stuff that goes back and forth and having that, all that experience to figure out what you want to do for sure is still going to help in the long run. Yeah, it, it really is. So no, I'm glad. Yeah. That's my, that's my take on education and correlating it between work experience. <laughs> and that's one of the other <laughs> things. Yeah, that's one of the other things too that I wanted to talk about is we mentioned before is all the free time that you have in school and all the stuff you can do on top of your studies because people say that, you know, I have to oh I went to class and I got back at one PM. I need to I need to lay down and sleep. I need to rest before I do yeah. anything else. And even at that there's not that much to do the rest of the day and they think the day's over already. Whenever we were at yeah. Slippy Rock I know you and I talked about this all the time because of the stuff we saw going on around us. And one of the biggest things that really stuck for me on the whole topic of working for your knowledge and what people are willing to do to get better is after Jake and I did the research study with the firefighters, it was during the, I think it was the PATHOM convention. Um, for those of you that didn't attend Slippery Rock with us, our major was PATHOM, Physical Activity and Fitness Management. And once a year, we would have a convention where the students, the professors would put on stuff. There were classes from local business people that owned gyms, worked in athletics, that sort of stuff. It was just a huge convention that all these professionals would come together and share their knowledge with each other and network and everything. And our professor, Dr. Kovacs, who is one of the most 
involved professors I have known in all my time in college that has done so many different things with strength and conditioning and research and all this sort of stuff. He was Jake and I's research mentor during our firefighter study. He was the faculty mentor that headed up our project. And after the conclusion of our project during the PAFM convention, he had a workshop that he talked to students about participating in this university funded research because no one wanted to do it and the university had all this money laying around they wanted to spend on students to do scholarly research but they just couldn't get anyone to do it so the idea behind this was he invited jake and i to come in and talk to these kids about the cool stuff we got to do how we got to work with these firefighters run around strength program how we got to control all this and really take ownership of a program and all the good we got out of it and we went in and we talked to these kids about it and all the stuff we did and how much time we spent on it and everything and what will always stick with me forever is I know he was trying, Dr. Kovacs, Dr. Kovacs was trying to coax these kids into participating in it. And one kid raised his hand and he asked us, what class did you do this for? And Jake and I and Dr. Kovacs just kind of looked at each other with like real confused. And then I, 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 I answered, I think I answered the question. I talked to the kid and I was like, well, we didn't do this for any class. We just did this to do it. You know, we we decided to come up with this idea on our own and we took it to the school and we had to do all these trainings and hours and hours and hours of research. And I have a 400 page binder of a literature review I had to do to make sure that no one ever did this study before. I have 400 pages worth of art, like printed out publications and studies I had to re like organize to make sure no one did the same thing. And then on top of yeah. that all the organization and the planning and the programming and then actually training the guys how many hours we put into this. And the kid was asked us what class we did. And after I explained that to him, he was like, so you didn't get any credit for this. And I, I was, no, I didn't get any credit for this. But, <laughs> no, man. But look at all this stuff I can put on my resume because of this. Yeah, dude. And then he was just kind of, he was just kind of like, yeah, sorry, you're good. he was just kind of like, oh, okay. And then you could see on, after I explained that to all these kids and told them, all this stuff, I say kids, but I mean, they were my age, but yeah, they, after I explained to them all the stuff I got to do, how cool it was and everything I learned, everyone was just like, oh, well, it doesn't count towards my points here at school. So I, it's not worth my time. I'm too busy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's the thing that I'm telling you, like, I'll be honest with you. If I was hiring for like a strength coach, personal trainer, uh, assistant manager, like, if I was hiring for one of those, and by the way, I do hire personal trainers. Like, I have my own staff of personal trainers that I have built myself at this gym. Um, so I understand the interview process and yeah. everything like that. But if, if I was hiring someone, man, and the only experience they had was a college degree and working at, like, I don't know, a fucking Applebee's. Like, dude, I'm not hiring you if you had a 4.0 GPA. No, that doesn't mean shit. The, the field. No, I'm going to take the kid who has a 400 page lit review worked for free and has like a 3.4 GPA. Like that's the person I'm going to take uh, because it's still over three for a GPA. They did free work while they were in school full time and they're just willing to like put in the work, man. So like I get it. Like everyone, I mean, today, especially in school, it's just like it's one of the things where kids that have no business saying this they're always like well what's in it for me or does it count towards my credit that's all they you care know? about well, no dude yeah exactly because everyone is in it for the short-term gain they they just want it to graduate they want it they want their gold star they don't understand the investment degree. and it's what's that they don't understand the investment no they don't and until you sit down and put the work in like you and jake did it's, it's one of those things that people just won't know. They just won't know whatsoever. And, uh, it's, I don't know. It's just all, it will always be a shortcoming of people between the ages of 18 and 23. And that's, I mean, I'm not saying it should be a normal because not everyone wants to do the free work. Some people just want like a, a degree and then start working and that's completely fine. Uh, but at the same time, like, man, if you really want to say you want to be a strength coach or something like that, or an assistant manager at a planet fitness, even like, dude, 
you have to do extra shit for free. Yeah. And it might cut into your school schedule. That doesn't matter. And, you know, going back to what you wanted to talk about with, like, how much time we have and how much time people waste in school. Like, dude, you don't know tired if you took two classes, no matter how long they were, and took a test. Like, that's not being tired. You may mentally be a little tired, but, man, I have... I mean, at that point, if that's what you're doing, taking two or three classes a day, and that's the biggest stressor in your life, if your life were any easier, you'd be dead. Oh, dude. And those, those people that think, you know, having three classes and one test is a lot are those people that will end up working like those cubicle corporate jobs. And I'm not talking down to them whatsoever because they're, those are necessary jobs, but I just, I, I, can't and I couldn't stand this in school either and I know you're the same way but I couldn't stand when kids were like oh dude I had two classes today I'm so tired bro like I just need to go take a nap and I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the day but on the other hand they're posting on Instagram and they're telling people around school that they're gonna end up working for a pro team for strength and conditioning or they're gonna end up being like owning their own gym like dude the, the only thing you're gonna own is your fucking lunch hour at your yeah. nine to five job you know, like that's the only thing. So it's, it's a weird way to think. Like I thought very weird in college, but it's just panning out to be true for yeah. most of the people, not everybody, but most. So Yeah. And I'm sure, yeah. I, I'm sure that D1 school that they want to work at and be the head strength and conditioning coach is going to call them right after their nap to interview them. Yeah, a, exactly. Right. And one of our friends, uh, Zach Cirillo, like, dude, he's grinding right now, man. He's working strength and conditioning. He got his CSCS. Like, he was working for free and doing volunteer work during the summers and everything like that at high schools, like you and I were doing at different jobs. Like, it's just examples of people that just want it, man. Like, it, I just can't stand when people say they want it and then they do something different and then they blame it on, like, school or parents or money. Like, bro, go work for free. Like, yeah. you know, that's why you work three jobs in a summer. And that's why you don't block off three hours of your night when you get home from class at your apartment to watch Netflix and movies of shit you've already seen. Like, I, I just... Yeah, people cement that sort it, of stuff but... into their schedule and view that yeah. as a necessity and doing all this other stuff that's actually important is going to benefit them. They write them off because that's become such a part of their routine that they can't get rid of it. And yeah, man. that reminds yep. me of a, a really good example on everything that we just kind of said. If you guys have not listened to... <laughs> The MFCEO project or Real F on Real as Fuck on Spotify and everywhere else, wherever it is now, from Andy Frazella. It is perhaps the best podcast I have ever listened to and you will ever listen to in your life. Look that up. There is an episode of the MFCEO project called Are Your Goals Really Your Goals? I want to say it's episode 102 or something like that. But basically, what they talk about is you're saying that you want to be a strength coach here. You're saying that you want to be a doctor. You're saying that you want to manage this gym, but all you're doing is sitting around watching Netflix. So those might be your goals that you're telling yourself are your goals. But if you're not acting towards them, they're not really your goals. If they were your real goals, you'd be doing something to get there. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a difference between wishing and working. There just is. Um, and you know, like I use, dude, I used to listen to those podcasts and like those motivational videos on YouTube and think to myself like, okay, well all these guys that are like rich and famous and wealthy and like they have a good life. Like they're telling me not to watch Netflix and stuff and how easy they're making it seem, but it's like really hard. And, uh, people are probably wondering like, well, how do I like stop doing that then? There, like there's no, there's no magic pill. There's yeah. just not like, it's just literally getting up. And it, it just becomes a sense of duty and not motivation. Exactly. Um, and I know it sounds very, like, militaristic, but, dude, like, it just, it clicked for me one day because, like, after, after my director back in, like, last August during my internship, after I worked my ass off for the entire summer, I worked, like, 30 to 35 hours a week for free on top of two other jobs that I had, like, and then at the end of the summer, I would put all my eggs in the one basket, like with this job, because I thought I was going to make it after college and get a job right after, like after I graduated. And then he told me that he wasn't going to hire me on my very last day of my internship. And that's where it clicked with me, like, okay, like this, if I really, really want this, this needs to become a sense of duty 
and not like just motivation to get up in the morning. Like even if you're tired, even if it's dark and cold outside, like, man, like the ability to just get up, like once you're up, you're fine. But I mean, it's people just don't want it hard enough that they are not willing to get up. There's no magic pill. No, there's really and- not. There's no magic pill. And it doesn't matter how many YouTube videos you watch on motivational, like mashup videos, that shit doesn't work, dude. Yeah, I if think it's a load of garbage at this point. And it just, I realize now that it's just a load of garbage. Yeah. It really is. And if you're not doing it and making active strides towards that and trying to build that knowledge and experience to get in the direction you want to, and that thing that you might be going for right now doesn't work out, and you don't have all that stuff in your toolbox to move on to the next thing, you're just going to drown. Like, what do you do at that point? Yeah. 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 That's all it is. Like, that's all it is, man. And it sucks. It really sucks to say this, but like when people say like, oh, they've got to learn the hard way. Like, it's true. Like, yeah. And like, I can't tell you how much like living away from home now, I can't tell you how much I took for granted living from home, whether it was like money or having a bed like dude i slept on an air mattress for the first three months i lived down here yeah i just i just got a bed last week just got a bed and a bed frame like it took it takes that long man it ta- and people like they just want things now and they're just going to go broke because they just want those material things like you said that thing you buy at the store that you use one time yep and you know you're done yep. like if, if you have if you have two thousand dollars in your checking account what are you going to do? Are you going to go blow it on a couple pairs of Nikes and stuff like that? Or are you going to go get groceries, pay all your bills, then move the rest of it into your savings? Like, what are you going to do? And so, if you can bring yourself to play the long game and do the stuff that isn't fun right now and put in that time and learn to get better in the long run instead of having that fun stuff right now, whether it's having the fun job right now instead of the sucky working for free, grinding your ass off, whenever you get that thing down the road – apart from getting the quick, easy, nice shit right now, it is a thousand times more worth it and feels so much better to get that than whatever you could oh, use does. that for right now. Dude, it does. And you know what? When I first moved to South Carolina in August, like, I knew, like, just so you guys know, like, my my life is not great. Like, I love my job and I love where I'm at. But, dude, like, I'm in a gym 12 hours a day. And I come home, it's dark when I get there, it's dark when I come home. And, like, people think that it's just going to the beach all the time and, like, like having all these nice dinners. Like, no, dude, I'm only getting paid, like, not that much for salary, and I'm, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Like, if you guys are willing to sacrifice that, you know, then it's okay. But, man, like, those little wins that I get, like, they add up. And it, it feels so much better when I get the little wins, like you said. Um knowing that I just worked for it, even though, you know, my life may not on paper be as great as I want it to be. You know, when I walk into work and hear someone say that, you know, how, how much they like the personal training or something, you know, those are considered little wins to me that I feel so good about that. I knew I worked towards not the paycheck I get every two weeks. I already know that's coming. I don't know when good or bad comments are coming about myself or my gym, you know? Yeah. So I take those very seriously. And I that's take what, people very seriously. That's what I think screws a lot of people up and how we talked about making a commitment to what you want to do with school and a career and everything like that. What screws a lot of people up is all they see is that highlight reel of the time that they changed the personal trainer changed someone's life and all the weight they lost or that time that the doctor saved someone's life and you know changed everything for them and their family. They don't see like everything that goes in behind it. That's like the 45 minutes out of the week, the highlight reel that they see. But there's all this other stuff. If you're a personal trainer and you have three clients that cancel on you in a week, that's how much less money in your pocket. Or if you're a doctor yeah. and you have a patient that you can't f- save them, you can't fix them, and they die on your watch, like stuff like that that people don't think about and all they pay attention to is that highlight reel. So whenever they get into that point, they haven't weighed out everything that's involved with that. And then shit like that happens, and it's not everything that they thought it was. And all that up until that point has been a waste of time because they can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I Dude, I, I agree. I think we hit the hammer on the nail here with this one for sure. So I agree. So to, everything that we talked about with 
managing your time through school and the background, doing the work and everything, just in a simple question to you, CJ, was it worth it? Yeah. Exactly. Um, no one, and that's it, the, no one's going to tell you it's not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And well, and it's not just because people want to say it's not. It's just because there is literally some people out there. And when I when I took this job to move down here to South Carolina, like there are literally people I talked to that were like, instead of saying congratulations, they they literally either texted me, messaged me, or you know called me or whatever, and they're like oh, well, how long do you think it'll be before you get back? Because, you know, you're going to be so far away from home and you're going to miss your family and stuff like that. And I'm I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, dude, like I'm not going to say I'm not to try to sound like a hard ass. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. I was like, it's going to suck. And I can tell you guys, like, it's lonely all the time. But, you know, going to your question with it being worth it, like when I'm lonely, dude, and I'm sitting there after like a 12-hour day and, you know, I maybe missed out on two sales or something. I sit there in my apartment when I get home and I'm just like, you know what? I was like, I just need to relax because if I didn't work for free so much and if I didn't get told by bosses and directors that I'll never be more than a personal trainer or a strength coach, you know, if it wasn't for those failures and those people being nasty to me and stuff and working for free, then I wouldn't be sitting here in the first place. So like, dude, I just take it one day at a time. And that's all I did before I moved down here when I was working three jobs at a time. Like, it's just one day. It's one day at a time. Like, you know, do comments like that sting and does the free work sting sometimes? Yeah, it's not, it's not fun all the time. But, like, dude, it's just, it's just putting feelings aside and just doing your damn job. Yeah. Like, it's just doing your damn job for the better. So, yes, I think it was completely worth it. Um And I don't think you have to, (laughs) I don't think you have to take it to the extreme levels I do with thinking and doing, but (laughs) I think mold, I think molding it and adapting it to your own life and how you feel and your personality and stuff like that. I think once people figure out how to mold it and find their own perspective, it becomes a lot of fun and it's just, it opens up a lot of doors. That's all. Yeah. And another thing with that too, is people see you know, there's always going to be that like 1% of people that can do a ridiculous amount of shit at one time and balance everything and be successful at it and get experience out of it and make it great. But that doesn't work for everyone. Everyone needs to mold things to themselves, like you said. So if you're looking to take yeah. that next step and do take on a little bit more and get experience and better yourself, don't look at the guy that has a million things on his back because that might work for him and he might be being able to get through that without imploding on himself but that doesn't mean that needs to be your first step to you know exactly take on that guy's lifestyle because that mold might not fit you and chances are you're going to collapse under what someone else is doing yeah yeah and and that's something that it's a good thing you said that because that's something i take a lot of pride in not have done like something i didn't do uh growing up was like that light bulb went off really quick for me saying like oh okay well this person's a strength coach for this college. Well, I don't really give a fuck, like whatever. Uh, I'll read their research and I'll take it with a grain of salt because I knew I would probably understand it differently. Um, And just understand that like there are people that we look up to, but at the same time, like their background is completely different. And yeah, I just can't stand, like I couldn't stand when high school kids or college kids would come up to me And they would be like, oh, well, I want to be like this dude. And, like, I want to be able to be a strength coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers because, like, this guy, he worked here, and he told me I had to get this degree. Like, dude, no. Like, no. Uh, All I had was two personal training certifications, and I was contracted for strength and conditioning by three high schools at a time. Was it legal? Probably not. (laughs) That's a great I got, area. If I, dude, if I got in trouble, you know, I wasn't really certified. I mean, I had my own liability insurance and CPR, but that's different, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things, dude. Like, I just, it's being able to understand other people's roads um, and just not taking it personal. Like, just don't, whether it's your mentor or coach or parent or friend, like, like, 
I appreciate people's stories, but I never take them personally. Like, you know, especially if they're giving advice, like I've gotten advice from people. They're like, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You should probably get your master's in XI. You definitely won't get a job if you don't have this degree or this certification. Yeah. Like it's, it, that's just, is it true for some jobs? Yes. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, like, man, I like as a director now at a gym, I don't have a business degree. I don't even have a business associates for like marketing or anything. Yeah. And 80, and 85% of my job Straight up is marketing. sales generation. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, and the other 15% is personal training. Like I just, I just feel like it's just horseshit when people try to follow other people's paths. Uh, instead of trying to mold it to their own yeah, and, and make their own perspective Other people from it. like preach and present their paths to everyone and saying that's the way they need to go. But there's a reason they're in the position they're in and they are their own. They have their own name. They're not, their name is not your name. They are a different person than you. So you cannot follow that person, should not follow that person exactly in their footsteps. You need to find your own direction. Yeah, dude. Yep. That's, that's really, that's really all it is. And again, this is one of those topics where people are probably like, oh, well, you guys make it sound so easy. It's easier said than done. Well, not really. Like, it's just about learning to listen and then taking what you're listening to and just finding out what parts of it you can actually apply to your life. Like, it's, it's really, it's not that hard, but it's, it takes tedious and consistent work at it. Like, it just does. Because if you don't, then your opinion will always be changing. You'll never have your own morals. You're ne- you'll never have your own beliefs. And am I saying you shouldn't change your morals or beliefs? No, because as we grow and change as people, it's necessary to change, you know, or maybe just like tweak your morals and beliefs a little bit the more Absolutely. you educate yourself, you know. But there's a difference between changing your morals and beliefs based on actual research and education and changing it based off some dude who had really good connections and just magically got a job, and now he's trying to teach people when he doesn't even really have a background because those people just end up being exposed as just liars and garbage. Yeah, basically. and that's that's the unfortunate wow. thing. Most of the time, you end up needing to shovel through five tons of shit to find five ounces of wisdom. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is, dude. That's really all it is. So, yep. So... All of that can really, there's there's so much with experience and picking your own path and directing your life in the way that you need to go and not in the way someone else's has. But I want to talk a little bit more specifically about the path that you've taken to get you where you're at. Yeah. So you mentioned, I shouted out your podcast before, the CFN podcast. If you guys haven't listened to that, check that out. CJ runs that. He's got guests on there too. He talks about some really interesting stuff check him out but what has brought that to where it is now he started cfn back in school whenever he was doing all this other stuff and built it to where it's at today and all the hiccups and road bumps and everything along that that he's used to build his path tell me a little bit about that all the everything that you had to put into that on top of everything else you were doing to get where you're at now so we're we're just talking about CFN. Yeah, the like st- this, yeah the start of it. Um. Okay. Uh. So sophomore, sophomore year, I want to say. Um. And just so you guys know, if you were listening earlier, you know, I started doing personal training when I was like seventeen and eighteen, and strength and conditioning and getting into athletics. Um. It basically started when. After I got my personal training certifications when I was 19 years old, I think it was like fall or spring of sophomore year. I don't know. Um, I obtained two personal cert- personal training certifications, and I, I told my mom, I was like, hey, I was like, I have a little bit of skin in the game already, what, even though like a year is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I told her, I was like, hey, I have some money saved up for me, you know, working my ass off and stuff. Like, instead of just, people knowing my name, I wanted to brand it. And I told my mom, I was like, instead of people like calling me and asking me for training sessions and advice and stuff, I wanted it to be as professional as possible. And I wanted to brand it. Um, 
And of course, like she's always on board with whatever I would say. She always tells me, she's like, just make sure you have a plan. And uh, that's what we did. Um, and the way CFN came to be, it was a lot of guessing. And uh, I was like, well, I was like, what names haven't people really taken? And I wanted my name to be in the company title or the yeah. brand title because uh, I still wanted that personal touch. Um, but I wanted it to be professional. So I came up with Campbell Fitness and Nutrition. Um, it's a long name, and that's why I came up with the acronym CFN. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. Uh, and so after that, I was like, okay. I was like, now what's going to be my next step? Um, and I thought I thought the best way to do that was to get merchandise, you know, because uh, at the time I, was, I just got contracted by Butler Hockey for strength and conditioning for CFN. Like, it was official. Um, so I was like, okay, like, let's do this, man. Like, let's get the ball rolling. So um, I went on, and all guys, all it really takes is a Google search. Like, all I did, I remember sitting in my apartment. Uh, this is junior year now, going into junior year. Um, I remember sitting in my apartment one afternoon. It was like a Saturday or Sunday. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I was like, I'm going to get my own merchandise. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to be different than everyone else. It's going to be sick. And uh, I'm going to, like, sell my shit for people to believe into it. And so all I did was go on Google, and I typed in uh, customizable merchandise or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I, I was just scrolling through Google pages because, you know, you get, like, the custom ink and, like, all the yeah. corporate merchandise crap. And I didn't want that. And uh, so I found this company from um, Chicago, and I think they're called uh, – fitness Inc or something like that or fitness. It was fitness wear something fitness wear Inc. I believe in yeah. Chicago. And so honestly what I did, I went to their website. I saw the work they did. They specialized in small business fitness merchandise, which was right in my wheelhouse. And all I did was copy and paste the dude's email who owned the company. And I just emailed him and told him my story. And then I'm, I'm, I was about to turn 20 at the time. And I was like, hey, dude, I was like, I'm on a budget. I have this much amount of money. I was like, what can I get for this? And also, I want you to help me create a logo. And he emailed me back out of the grace of God. And he was like, yeah, man, I'll create a logo. What are you looking for? And I'll never forget. I told him, I was like, hey, I want the old 90s, like 80s, 90s retro Nike letters yeah. that are on like the Air Force Ones. <laughs> and uh, I just told him. I told him straight up, I was like, that's what I want the CFN lettering to be. And you've seen it before, dude. Like, it's literally that, like, old school Nike lettering. So It stands um, out. He created the logo. Yeah, he created the logo for me. Um, I bought the Atlas logo that I have on a different website, and I just got it, like, copyrighted and stuff. It's very easy to do. It literally takes a Google search and then looking around. Yeah. Um, but I sent him that. He created the lettering from CFN, made it all from scratch, and then he presented me options like he asked me. He's like, hey, uh, do you want hats? Do you want hoodies? Do you want long sleeve T-shirts? He sent me probably three links to all these company articles that had, like, you know, Hanes, Gildan, uh, Port Authority, Under Armour, Nike. Like, So you had bottom-of-the-barrel apparel uh, companies, and then you had all the way up to, like, Nike and North Face and stuff like yeah. that, which obviously I couldn't afford. So. Uh, I mean, you I could have bought, you could have bought maybe one thing from North face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and look, I, yeah. Right. Uh, so he was like, okay. So I told him, I was like, Hey, I'm probably going to be able to only afford like Haynes and Gildan and like Port Authority stuff and stuff like that. Oh, Badger was another apparel company that was kind of cheap. And I was like, let's go with those. So I ended up getting like, he gave me a lot of really good deals. I ended up getting a ton of shit. I got like dry fit, short sleeve and long sleeve t-shirts. Um, cotton long sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, regular Hanes t-shirts, uh, hats, and that was it. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to do this. So my mom didn't spend a dime of her money on my merchandise. I refused to let her do that. I paid for it all myself. Yeah. Um, my, my apartment room was filled up with boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a little warehouse uh, once the boxes came in. And dude, I just started posting on Instagram about it. I started posting workouts. Um, I started really exposing what I was doing with high schools and strength and conditioning and stuff like that. And people were catching on, dude. And plus they just really liked the logo and they wanted to support a friend, which is all I could ask for. Yeah. So, 
um, yeah, it kind of took off from there. And uh, I started getting contracting from more high schools around the Pittsburgh area. And I started doing online personal training. I started doing in-person personal training where I could, uh, writing programs for people and putting my logo all over it so people would know where it's coming from. Um, I made, I took the time to like research how to make professional workout sheets and label them and, you know, ways to carry out programs. And, you know, it, it was a lot of my re- own research and learning on the back end that I didn't learn in school. So uh, it's a lot of work on your own. By the time I graduated, uh, I knew CFN was probably going to taper off a little bit because obviously we were leaving college and, you know, I wouldn't be able to sell as much merchandise. But um, I put merchandise on the back burner and I was like, you know what, if I'm really going to do this one day, um, I got to put it on the back burner for now and just make sure I'm learning and doing jobs and stuff like that. So that's where I think I created the CFN podcast my sophomore year or maybe junior year. And I bought a USB microphone from Best Buy for like 40 bucks. Yeah. I researched like recording software, which like what you use, Nate, I use audacity. Yeah. Um, and then I had to find like a broadcasting website that I could send it out to like Spotify and stuff like that. So it was a lot of work on the back end, but I knew the CFN podcast would carry the brand name more than the merchandise and my work after school um, than the merchandise ever would. So that's how I started the CFN podcast. I thought, you know what? I might as well share my stories and experiences because not a lot of college kids were doing what I was doing aside from like you, Zach, a couple other people. Um, but you understood the grind and I shared just maybe, you know, like I shared random subjects like, Oh, um, the importance of chocolate milk, you know, just dumb shit like that, but it has a lot of benefits. So that actually ended up being one of my most listened to podcasts. So like I knew just doing fun subjects like this where I could provide value with people. Um, that's where I really hit home with the CFN podcast. And that's what's carried me more than the brand name itself. Um, even though when I do have the time, I still write programs for people on the side and put my CFN logo on it. So I tell people it was never really a business cause I didn't have my own gym or anything. It was mostly just a brand name that I can carry with me for the rest of my life until I'm at that point where I can open up my own gym, then I can bring it all back. So yeah. that's the plan. So everything you did with that, I mean, it wasn't like you said, it's not a gym it's not an organization or something that's like your full time that's generating all this for you and all the time that it took you to build that and run with it the way you did the money you had to put into it buying all that merchandise i mean that was like you had to buy that and that was like an upfront thing you didn't know what all was going to happen with that all the time that you put in with that all the whenever you started doing the podcast you had to figure out how to do the podcast how to organize all this stuff how to edit it you had to figure out how to do all the program writing and just the marketing yep. and professional stuff that wasn't required of you. It's not like you were doing this for, you weren't hired for a gym or an organization or something no. to do all this stuff, nope. but you spent all that time and invested in yourself doing that. And look at this now, you wanted to go into like the per, like strength side of stuff and you did this with CFN and you had to take all this time to market, do legal stuff build a business side of things and look at what you're doing right now. What you just told me a few minutes ago, your job is like, what did you say? 75% marketing and 25% fitness or was it 85 and 15? Yeah, dude, it's it's 85 and 15. And look all, yeah. Look how that translated at the time you were doing that. You might not have said, Hey, I'm going to use all this marketing and stuff at some time, but all that stuff that you learned from prior work experience, you're doing it now. Yeah. Yeah, and a, a great piece of advice that I also was listening to on a podcast a couple years ago, which not even a couple years ago, probably like back when we were sophomores or freshmen in college, I was listening to a, a podcast and the guy said, the main point that every teenager and like 20 year old needs to do is taste every single flavor of work that you can. So like whether it was you with concrete and stuff like that, or me with, you know, working retail and I worked at FedEx as a package handler from 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. Like you have to do all of these jobs to see what sticks. Like I could have, you you just have to taste all the flavor. Yeah. And some people like they're never going to know what's good for them until they try. Like there's no right and wrong. 
there's just right for you. And that's all it is. Um, and you're not going to know that until you start putting yourself in uncomfortable situations or situations that you don't even know are helping you. Like you said, with me and like the marketing and retail and like sales and stuff, I didn't know I was going to get this director job. Was it something I wanted? Yeah, but I didn't know what happened that fast. And, uh, like I worked retail in at the outlets, you know, as a part-time job. Like I did these jobs just to try them out and to see like, okay, like I know I don't like this or I know I like this. Yeah. Or I like part of this. Um, and it's really molded me. And I just sit there and laugh some days because I have to do things for work sometimes as a director that I would have never been able to do or figure out if it wasn't for me doing like, some dumbass job is like a 16 year old at a go-kart park, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous looking back. So I literally tell people I'm like work as many jobs as possible before you start to look for jobs in your field, because you never know if like that ice cream job or that go-kart park job or the mini golf job, you never know what you're going to learn there and stuff like that. Like, I don't know, dude. It's just, it's just baffling. Yeah, it's, until, it's a good way, a positive way, but it's just baffling, dude. Until you're in a position that everything comes together, it won't make sense because the same thing, like, I talked about in my last podcast how, like, all these different jobs I worked over time, and there are even more jobs that I've had in my life that I didn't talk about. I've had so many jobs over my life from whenever I started at that greenhouse when I was 14 up until now, and I get shit a lot because I'll go work somewhere for like two or three months and I'll go somewhere else because I'm trying all the things. I'm seeing what I like, what I don't like, what I hate, what I know I don't want to do. And then I'm taking skills and stuff away from it and taking it other places. But if you go and try something for two months and hate it and then quit and go somewhere else and do something new, who cares? As long as you're still doing exactly. something, you try it, try it all. You might find something that you like that you didn't know about. Like whenever I came back from deployment and I started that landscaping job, at first I was like, well, it interests me. You know, I enjoy that kind of work and everything, but doing physical work. But is it, is landscaping something I plan to do forever? No. But then I got into it and I started doing the job and I started being able to create things and seeing someone's yard go from just a patch of grass or gravel to these nice walls and manicured like beds of flowers and stone and all this sort of stuff that I did and that like sense of accomplishment and reward and knowledge that I got out of that on how to do those things it was something that I never would have understood or been exposed to and yeah I'm never going to do that with my life but it's something I got to try and then I just moved on and people yeah. won't try that stuff because they have it stuck in their head that uh, I might hate this or I might only do it for a month or two and then quit so what's the point anyways that's the wrong way to think about it Exactly. Exactly. I I don't know what else to say to that. That's just, you know what I mean? It's just, it's black and white. It really is. Yeah, so. people need to just stop being afraid to try the stuff. I mean, you never know what you might like. You might never know what you might, like you said, taking stuff from a go-kart park or an ice cream shop into big jobs. Once you get that real thing, you never know how long that's going to stay, how much that's going to mean down the road when it sticks to you and you remember that thing, like that thing you did six years ago or what your boss said to you to teach you something it, six years ago at that job. It's, it's so valuable and people won't, people can't understand that. No, they won't. And then they won't either. So yeah, man, that's all, <laughs> that's all it is. So then you touched about some other things that you did moving up as you worked through all these different jobs and bounced around getting experience, whether it was working at the outlet mall at Timberland selling stuff that ended up helping you, but you had a lot more specific experience too that you talked about a little bit earlier on when you went through the different school districts that you worked with, when you worked with some hockey teams, and that little bit of progression in between pretty much the end of college to where you're at now. What are some of the yeah. things that you took away from bouncing in these related jobs to get to where you're at now? Like I know different working with sports teams like the hockey and the kids and stuff like that is a lot different from what you're at now. And I talked yeah. about how things might be not directly related, but it kind of wraps around to the same point. What did you yeah. take away from those athletic jobs that you're translating now into what you're doing in this white collar setting? Um, 
I think the biggest thing would be that, and this is an issue I still have because it's just the way I am and what my personality is, but uh, it's just being okay with not pleasing everybody um, because you're going to have to make decisions that not everyone likes. Uh, you're going to be in situations where you have to make decisions for the betterment of maybe five or more people. Um, and they're not all going to think like you. They're not all going to agree with you, stuff like that. So I think if you're willing to put aside like, okay, um, this person, like they already don't like me and this person, like they already don't listen to me. Like, don't, don't waste time on them. Just do what you need to do and do what you think is right. And then whatever they choose to do from there, it's on them. And that's been like the biggest thing I've been trying to figure out between coaching and now being a director at a corporate gym and stuff like that. Like, dude, I have to deal with adults that don't like what I do sometimes. And I have to be okay with that, you know, because if I tried to please everyone, whether it's a team of 20 high school kids or a team of five personal trainers that are all older than me, it's still the same concept. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I think that's something that it's, a lot of people yeah. struggle with because especially in a fitness sort of job, no one likes going into the gym and having, you know, no one in general in life likes being told what to do by other people. But whenever you pay, you're giving up your money to have someone hand your ass to you and tell you what to do for yeah. an hour and, you know, make yeah. you hurt. It's, it's hard for people to like that. And what happens, I think, with a lot of people is I haven't been exposed to it and coached to the level that you have. But whenever a trainer is training someone and these people are grumbling and complaining and bitching and they're not liking it, they're, these the trainers and people, a lot of the time, it could be in any job, but specifically with fitness, they listen to all these complaints and everything and they get too worried about appeasing these people and making them like them and being happy that they don't focus on the end goal and they're just too weak to stick to that and they just bend at whatever criticism or complaints they get thrown at them and then they get off track from where they need to be yeah yeah that's 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 really all it is um yeah i don't know i couldn't agree with you more dude that's that's really all it is and i mean um, that happens with everything on like no matter where you work people are always going to bitch and complain there's just those people and if you can't stick to the direction you need to go I, I don't care where you work. If you work for a contractor building stuff or if you work at a store and, you know, you're going through and you're organizing the store and you're getting complaints and stuff like that, but that's the best way to do it and that's the way that you need to do it for things to work properly, yeah, so those people are going to be upset by that, but you just got to do it that way. So you can't, like, change things just because someone doesn't like it. Exactly. Like, they're... Whether, and this is something, like, if you're a private contractor or personal trainer, do you get to make your own rules? Kind of, you know, but uh, as a company, wherever you work, like, there's still policy. Like, you still have to follow policy. Um, and that's one of the hardest things is whether it's coaching or, you know, being in my position with management, um, I love to have fun and I love to crack jokes and have fun with my staff, but I also create that line with them. And I also create this line with high school varsity soccer players. Like I create that line where when it's time to do work, it's time to do work. And if you don't like what I'm saying, that's okay. There's still policy and there's still the long-term goal in mind. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's usually what takes over whether it's a good or bad way. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, that's just something that a lot of people struggle with as leaders is, you know, are you okay with telling someone that you're not giving them something or you're doing something different when you know that they aren't happy about it? Like, are you willing to do that? And uh, I think if you are and you learn that and you're okay with it, then it helps so much in the long run because it's not that you learn not to care what people think, because that's just the wrong point of everything. Um, but if you really want to be a leader and you really want to level up and you really want to take risks and stuff like that, you have to be willing to look 
you know, even your best friend in the eye and being like, Hey dude, I'm doing this or I'm not doing this because you know, X, Y, Z. And as long as you're okay with your decision and willing to accept any consequences that may come from that decision, um, it takes a little bit of stress off you because it just, it just comes down to critical thinking and decision-making. And that's something that has helped me from all of these jobs with high schools and applying it to work and stuff like that is, you know, when I have a team of 20 high school girls telling me that they don't want to run, you know, could I tell them, Oh, you know what girls, you're right. Like you work hard today. We're not going to do it. <laughs> I'm take time, a nap. Like, like, yeah, you know, like I, I tell them and they know me. And I'm like, aw. I was like, well, I was like, yeah, I've got 20 minutes. And then guess what? You get to go sit by the pool all day and not do anything anyway because you're all high schoolers. So guess what? We're going to run for 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's it. And look, I don't say it to be a dick. Like, I don't say it to be mean or anything. It's just coaching. It's just leadership. Like, yeah. you have to understand where people are at, meet them where they're at. And then once you understand where they are and where they want to go, it's your job to literally drag their ass if you have to. So, yeah, sometimes you just gotta you all, gotta man. do it, and I think that comes into what we talked about earlier, like people getting too far into things and not being able to make the decisions where they need to be. Is people need to understand and accept the fact that they're going to be able to make these calls, or not be able to make these calls when other people complain and present their opinions and stuff like that. And if you can't do that and you're trying to get into a job that does that, don't go to school for it. Don't put in all this work and everything to get to that point if you're just straight up not going to be able to do it. It's just not for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's Yep, that's it. That's it. It's, that's, it's just bottom line. It's just bottom line. So, yeah, you're right. I agree. So, basically, what it all comes down to is you need to be able to make these decisions and get yourself going in the direction you want to. And... Really be willing to do the things, do the hard work, do the sucky shit for the long term to get the base you need to start going in the direction you want to be. And while you're doing that, you need to be able to look into everything and make the choices early on to figure out if you're heading in that direction for no reason or if that's going to be something that's actually worth your time. And if you're sinking your time into it, it better be worth it or else you're you're, you've only got so much time. No matter what you do and all the money you make, you can't buy more time. So you need to use that wisely. Use it now. Make the connections. Get the knowledge. Get the experience. Work for free. Get something out of it. And you'll be good forever. There you go. And hey, like people listening, it's not like I fucking made it. Like I didn't make it. Dude, like I'm in the trenches with all of you still working. Like, it's just at different levels, and so is Nate. Like, we're all still working. We're all still dragging our faces through the mud and trying to figure out who we are and what we want to do. Uh, we're just purely speaking off experience because, you know, the more you're willing to put yourself in those uh, situations to either sink or swim, uh, the more you can give back to other people, and that's what him and I are doing right now. So, um, yeah, that, he, he covered it really well, and I'm just I was just happy to have a part in this. Exactly. And like we said, just because someone else is going away and having success in their direction doesn't mean you need to model everything off of them. I don't do things like CJ does. CJ doesn't do things like I do. I won't do things like you all will. You all probably shouldn't do things like we do. It's just what works for each other. You got to find your path and follow that way that fits your mold. Yep. CJ, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and spending all this time with me as you've been on your lonesome drive across the country in the car today. <laughs> I got nothing but time, dude. But hey, thank you so much for uh, inviting me, and I hope I hope this helps whoever listens to it. And uh, if it, if you don't mind, I'll also post it on my podcast too, and I get some time to edit. So um, you know, send me the link or I can repost it and uh, we'll try to get this out to as many people as possible to try to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and let everyone know where they can find you on social media and where they can listen to your podcast. Yeah, guys. So uh, for Instagram, it's just CJ Campbell. Um, Campbell is spelled C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, -L, but I added an extra L. So it's CJ Campbell, all lowercase with three L's. Um, that's the Instagram. And then the podcast, if you guys want, 
All you have to do is go on pretty much any streaming website, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever it is, um, and just type in CFN Podcast, and a picture of my ugly face should show up somewhere with my logo. So <laughs> No one wants to see that. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I know, right? No one, uh, no one will miss it. So that's where <laughs> you guys can find me. All right, yeah, give him, a, give him a follow, a like, everything. I'm going to give him the audio file to this, so we'll have it on both the Head First Project and the CFN Podcast. Once again, you guys know you can find me on Instagram at the only Hoff. You can find the Head First Project page at Head First Project on Instagram. This will be on all the regular platforms. Thank you guys once again for listening to this. This has been the longest podcast to date but I think it has been some of the best all-around information that we've put out so far. Thank you, CJ, once again for coming on the show. Remember, always attack life head first.